left or right, left or right, left to right, left or right, left to right, left Hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Harry, otherwise known as Odd Mob, and I'm here today to give you a breakdown of my track Left to Right. Um, you might have heard the song before, it's a very simple track that uh, kind of made us a bit of a joke to begin with, and it somehow ended up in the Beatport top top five, I think it was. Um, but anyway, sh- shout out to West End for having me here today. Super keen to jump into this, and yeah, hopefully you learn something from this. I'll show you a few of my special techniques, and just a few things that I like to do when I'm in the studio. So, let's get straight into it. Um, if we jump off here with the build, we'll just have a quick listen to the track first. Left to right, 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 right
Look, would you believe it? More limiters. I'm just pushing everything. And as you, you can hear that it's like introducing a lot of distortion into the kick, which is what I was after in this case. So um, just some EQs, more limiters. This one is super, super pushed. And this is basically just a result of me just experimenting and just playing around with stupid amounts of clipping. Again, pushed again. So this kick is like not nice at all, but in the context of the track, it sounds good. So I decided to keep it that way. All right. So look, I'll go ahead and delete those empty layers since I technically don't need them anymore. Um, this is also a dead layer. Very good by me. So that's the main kick. And then you might have noticed here, I've taken out a lot of the sub and the reason for that is because laid with this stabby kick, I've actually got a techno sub, which is literally just a sample I picked up off of Splice. You can take this exact sample if you'd like. And um, basically all I'm doing here is... I've taken this sample, pitched it down three semitones, just to kind of match the key of the track. And then what I've got going on here is a little bit of multiband saturation. So I kind of wanted to warm it up ever so slight amount. And to do that, this track is separated into everything below 100 hertz, like the sub, more or less, and everything above 100 hertz. So um, on top of that, I've got a very small amount of saturation. It's not really doing a whole lot. Um, but I just kind of liked how it sounded. So, you know, these are the types of like nitty gritty personal choice things that obviously you'll have your own things that you like to play around with. But this just adds a tiny bit of warmth to this techno sub kick thing. So if you can hear when I turn it off, it gets a little bit quieter and um, a little bit less warm. So... It's subtle, but it does help a bit. So that's actually set to the soft sign preset in Ableton. I've done nothing but up the drive the tiniest little bit. Um, after that, I've got some volume shaping. So obviously while the kick is hitting, I don't really want the sub from this techno rumble to be playing at the same time as the sub that's coming from the kick. So this, this volume shaping is quite extreme. Um, but with the two, the kick and the techno sub together, it's almost indistinguishable when one ends and the next one begins. So if we solo both of these. So yeah, um, everything here is red hot. When I produce, I like to produce with a, a, a limiter on my master and then basically keep my kick at just about zero um, from the get-go. So as I'm mixing and as I'm producing, everything is very loud and kind of <clears throat> is coming out the other end how I want it to sound in the track. Um, now, that's just more of a personal preference, but I found when I was starting out and learning that producing with, producing with the end goal in mind at all times was actually quite helpful. So... You know, it could be something that works for you. It doesn't work for everyone. So, all right, moving up from there, we'll just keep on this drum theme. We've got a, this is literally just a hat loop. So sometimes I program my hat, sometimes it's loops. Um, in this case, I kind of wanted the, a shakery vibe, uh, like a, and when it comes to things like shakers, um, usually loops that are across, uh, across a lo longer span of time are better because I, I don't know if you've ever tried, but when you try to program a shaker with a single sample, it can sound very MIDI, like very, um, very clinical, I guess. Um, and you have to do a lot of playing around with volume automation and things like that to reintroduce that natural swing and groove. Whereas with a loop sometimes, if they've recorded it over a, a period, you can get that 
that same feel a lot quicker. So anyway, um, <coughs> the trick to this hat loop here, so I'll turn this off for now. So originally, if this is on um, Complex Pro, it would have sounded like this. So like pretty straightforward. Um, and this track is very swingy. So what I've got here, I've set it to beats and preserved the 16th notes and then set this to, I don't know what it's actually called, but the, the singular arrow. Um, so initially when this is on 100, it sounds like this. And then as you bring that down, you basically reduce the length of all those 16th transients. Um, so it kind of makes it all a bit stabbier, I guess, if you will. And then from there, to kind of match the groove of the track, if you go into here, uh, above groove here, you can select from a list of uh, built-in Ableton grooves. And the one that I use on this track, uh, I believe, is Notator 16C Swing. So it goes from sounding very on the beat. And then you add this in. So that adds a lot of life to the to the beat, and um, <clears throat> generally speaking, if I'm going to make a track with a groove like this, that exact same groove I'll be using across almost the entire track, wherever, wherever I can actually apply that um, that groove. So, if I have like a sixteenth note bass or uh, any other percussion, I'll try to keep it all in that same groove, which keeps it, you know, really tight keeps everything matching together I guess um, and it's a lot easier than programming a groove by hand every time because uh, you can avoid all the mess although sometimes you want the mess of uh, things being slightly uh, in different in the pocket in different ways at different times anyway so pretty straightforward moving on from there we've got the main tom of the track which sounds like this So this tom is actually, uh, it's very loud for beginners, but to begin with, I actually pitched it down eight semitones. So it actually sounded like this. And uh, in the Ableton sampler here, I've brought the sustain all the way down and adjusted the decay to make it more of a, a stab because previously it would have been more like this. So bringing the decay down ch changes it to this and then pitched it down eight because I just kind of like, I do pitch my um, drums a lot of the time. So hats, toms, sometimes kicks, I'll just pitch them up or down and just play around and see what sounds good because, um, you know, pitching percussion samples and stuff like that can really add a bunch of just like weird grime and muck to a track that gives it a bit of character. So, you know, it's not always the best for keeping your track super clean, but I would always recommend just playing around. Sometimes your sample will sound 10 times better if you've pitched it down two semitones or something. So, um, good experimentation technique. <clears throat> so on top of that, after that, Tom, we've got a little bit of overdrive courtesy of Trash 2. <laughs> If you don't know what Trash 2 is, it's a multiband distortion plugin, um, an industry staple, if you will. So definitely pick this plugin up on Black Friday sale or something like that if you get the opportunity. Um, and all I've got it set to is just a classic overdrive. So you could recreate this more or less with the Ableton overdrive. Um, but without it, it sounds like this. So it's just adding a lot more kind of high-end grit there. Uh, from there, I've got a, a limiter pushing it quite hard. That's oh, actually not pushing it too hard. Um, and then from there, I actually ended up removing the sub from the tom sample. Uh, <clears throat> just because I didn't like how it was clashing with that big techno rumble. Um, so I would recommend... T toms get really tricky because... Um, 
you don't want to you don't always want to take out all of the bass from a tom because i mean a, a t- half of the character of a tom sample is the bass but is the uh like low end sub but at the same time you don't want it to clash with a bass line or a, a big sub rumble or anything like that so uh it's kind of like on a track to track basis if you're going to high pass a tom in this case it was like a this just felt right i don't know if it's necessarily uh <clears throat> improving the track but it, i thought it sounded good so so you can kind of hear it does take away it does change the character of the sound a little bit um from there <laughs> i decided i wanted to push it even more so i've got a another limiter so you're kind of probably noticing a bit of a theme here um with the way that i work i kind of make changes as i go and then rather than jumping back and adjusting the first iter- uh, the first instance of said plugin or EQ or whatever, I'll just often add another one so that later on if I decide I don't like it, I can just simply like revert back to what I had by turning it off. Um, oh, and I, as you can see, actually, I did end up high passing it to about 91 hertz because um, there was a bit of clashing going on there with the sub. Cool. Um, from there with this ozone, sorry, it's just ozone is quite slow to open on my computer. Come back. <coughs> All I've got here is actually just the imager from ozone. And I've just played around and just made sure the, the low end is mono and reduced the width of this sample a little bit because it just sounded better. I don't know. So you can hear uh, this Trash 2 is actually introducing a fair bit of... I think it's Trash 2 that's actually introducing the stereo into this sample. So this imager is kind of just to draw that back a bit. I thought it sounded good. Cool. So that's basically like the, the main drive of the track. is just these... What is it? Four four like percussive layers if I group these all together how it all sounds like this oh, obviously that's all uh, it's all red hot coming out of there uh, all right so speaking of percussive layers we've actually got one more that I need to talk about and it's this very very small clap almost like a snare um in this track i kind of wanted a clap but i also didn't <laughs> so i kind of wanted the the idea of a clap but not one that was kind of you know have a very long transient uh, a long decay as you will so let's have a listen to this so this is just comprised of two layers um the first being this Sophie clap here, which is like this. And that's pitched up four semitones. No particular reason, I just thought it sounded good. And then from there, we've got this 909, uh, this saturated 909 clap. And as you can see, I've brought the decay of these two sounds down quite a lot to kind of turn it from a clap. Oh, sorry, it's probably sounding quite weird because of this kick tweak. Let me turn that off. Taking it from that kind of long sound down to a little stab. And um, you'll probably notice this clap is pitched down seven semitones. So, again, with the pattern of Odd Mob producing, lots of pitched drums. I just like how it sounds sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes it sounds good. So, this is... this kind This... Part of the clap is kind of providing the body, I, I, would, I would say. And this part of the clap is kind of providing the top end crispiness. So, you know, one being pitched down, one being pitched up. Kind of worked. All right, and then from there, uh, these two samples, I've got it running through a limiter. This probably should have been pro L, but I was lazy. Um, on top of that, I've got Camel Crusher, which is just a very, like, it's free. I'm pretty sure you could still get it. I'm pretty sure Camel Audio is still around, but it's just a distortion plugin with, what is this, maybe like 15 presets 
British clean is a very, very subtle one, which just kind of makes it a tiny bit louder and it has it as a tiny bit of like tube distortion. Um, so without it's kind of like this. Oops. Right. Left the right. So, sorry about that. So it does just kind of make it a, a bit louder and yeah, it's not doing too much. A bit of compression, a bit of distortion. Um, <clears throat> anyway, moving on from there, this is kind of a signature technique of mine, which is to play around with the EQ extra, in a very extreme fashion to kind of get the sound that I want and shape it how I want it to sound. So it kind of turns it from a clap more into a percussive knock. So realistically, at the end of the day, this whole like clap could have been comprised from just one good knock sample, but instead I've gone about it the very complicated way and done it like this. So the only other thing going on here is a little bit of um, just like soft low passing. I just didn't really like how the top that top digital distortion sounded. Um, from there, there's this kick tweak preset, and this one's kind of like shaping shaping the sound quite a lot. So if I turn this off, right, left, the right. It's just tightening it up even more. So. Left the right, 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 left the right.